Welcome back. You're watching Stock Watch with me, Zinati Kuma, and joining me to unpack your stock related questions tonight are Devin Shrewd from the Robay Group and Rikas Riedis from PSG Hall in One Reimsech. Uh, be sure to send your questions via email to stockwatch at bdtv.co.za or via SMS on 41392 or on X at Business Day TV using the hashtag Stockwatch. Thank you so much for your time, gents. Yeah, it's been quite a uh, last few days have been um, quite heavy um, in terms of the markets being in the red. Um, the resources 10 complex uh, though was doing very, very well. But today we have kind of a switch around where uh, we are seeing green screens across the board and then red there on that resources complex. Uh, Devin, what have you made of the kind of bounce back that we, we saw today? Look, first of all, it's nice to see. It's been a yeah. forgettable week or so. It's really, really been tough, tough going. As I, as I think the, the the market's kind of still grappling with this inflation outlook in the U.S. and and globally and what that means for rates. So yeah, nice, nice to see a bit of green on the screens. We'll we'll take it. Mm. I, I think partly what you're seeing today in our market is a dollar story. Um, so you you know as as the dollar's been strong, so that's that's hurt some of the the resource plays there. Um, but but yeah, it's it's really been pretty pretty tricky at the moment. I mean, we've had our high flying AI stocks, um, you, you know, get, getting trimmed a little bit of mm -hmm. late. You know, if you look at Nvidia um, and TSM, uh, I, I think you're starting to see some reality coming coming there. I mean, still good companies, but but maybe you know starting to look a little stretched in terms of valuation. And and I think um, yeah, investors are starting to look outside of those those stocks that have led us up here and, and seeing other parts of the market that, that potentially are actually doing quite well and haven't really been getting much much mm. focus. Yeah. Um, Rikas, on your side, do you also think that maybe in the US we could start seeing some volatility as the uh, inflation and rate cuts um, expectations um, kind of fight with the earnings season at this point? Yeah. Obviously, markets are going to be quite volatile around earnings season, but I think um, the one thing that, um, or I agree with Devin, as far as sector rotation is concerned, uh, I mean, it's even today, the uh, Russell 2000 doing better than um, the major indices. Um, so there is that focus shifting away from microchip, big tech towards your more industrial type of company. Um, and that's not only in the US, but I think in Europe as well. If we if we take a look at, for example, what, what happened in Europe today, your market leaders were your more industrial type of company. So there is a shift in focus. Um, and as Devin also said, market coming to grips with the fact that, um, as I've thought previously um inflation is going to be um or will remain a problem in the us they're not mm. going to get down to their target rate and also as i expected rumors or the feeling that um europe is not going to follow the us fed in in lowering interest rate but will probably um do it earlier than the us will Mm. Well, uh, Devin, you mentioned the uh, chip stocks, uh, ASML and TSMC, and actually it was quite interesting seeing the market's reaction to both. Yesterday, uh, ASML pulled down the semiconductor stocks, it, it, missed, it beat on profit, it missed, and, but missed on uh, sales. And then today you had uh, TSMC that uh, beat on analyst es estimates, and you saw uh, investors uh, plowing in there. I'm not sure, is there anything to note in that kind of difference between how markets reacted to the those two um, yesterday and today, or were they just both caught up in maybe the kind of market sentiment on those days? Yeah, look, it, it could be. I mean, what we are seeing is that there's still an incredible demand um, for for AI and these and these chip manufacturers. I, I think what the market is really trying to be a little bit more circumspect about is is the price they're paying for the you know the the manufacturers. And you know, we clearly saw when when this AI boom um first hit how nvidia led the 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 run up but then that started to move out to tsmc and others like it um asml as you mentioned so yeah i i, I think it's it's one of those ones where, where everyone wants to be 
on the dance floor and you know part of the party but you know at at, at some stage you know <laughs> might come down to earth a bit so I, I think market's grappling with that i think they realize they're paying a lot for future earnings and you know how much is too much um if there is disappointment i think these stocks will get punished but mm. but yeah by by and large i think they're living up to their reputations at the moment yeah well talking about the dance floor there's a viewer that wants to be on your guys's dance floors um what are the five instruments you look at prior to market open and after market close or end of your day. Arikas, is that something you can answer? Yeah, um, I mean, a lot, of ba a lot of it is based on what I've got both um, in my local and offshore portfolios, but um, because NASPAR's process is so important, I'll have a look at Tencent. I'll have a look at um, a commodity ETF that I follow because commodities is a big part of the East African market. I'll look at the, um, the, the dollar index because obviously that's your major benchmark um, mm. uh, currency effect. And then I'll also take, take a look at the Indian market because that's something that I'm tracking mm. um, pretty, pretty closely. So that's four at the open. At the close, it's just basically going through a checklist and and then see mm. what has moved beyond parameters mm. that I've set up for myself, whether that be stocks or indices. Interesting. Devin, do you have anything to add on your side? Look, I, I mean, I think what Rickers is looking at is is good and it's, you, you know, must be taken into consideration. I, I think, you know, what, what you can possibly add to that is maybe pre-open uh, the, the futures, you know, mm -hmm. our, our local futures and then the US futures that, that have quite a, a long window that, that they trade in. Um, I, I think also, you, you know, the various calendars, the, the macroeconomic calendar releases, particularly the, the, the bigger markets like the US, Europe, China, and that have an impact on our market. So, you know, be cognizant of that. And then the earnings release calendars, you know, we know we've got Netflix this evening as an example. Yeah. And, and so, you know, depending on what you're holding in your portfolio, or what's on your, your, your shopping list, those, those, those become important. But, the, but these are all fairly small, you, you know, movements, intraday movements, whereas for a long-term investor, I, I think you're kind of looking bigger picture, but they kind of mm -hmm. all feed into a narrative and a process and a and a, a way to manage a portfolio. And, and yeah, they're all important. But I mean, I think the number of times we've spoken about, um, you know, central banks, yeah. the Fed, <laughs> interest rates, inflation, which is probably the most watched economic number and the most True. maybe misunderstood economic number out there. <laughs> I, I, I think that's really got the market fixated at the moment. Ah, all right. Well, uh, let's move on to more questions. There's a question on Vodacom here. Uh, what's the reason for Vodacom's recent downturn and how long do you think it will take to recover and reach over 100 Rand again? Um, yeah, now at about 88 Rand. Um, Rikas, anything to note there on what has dragged Vodacom down uh, in the last few months? Well, um, basically because it's a telecoms company in South Africa, they've got huge expenses and um, from of a capital nature, and the income is um, under pressure. Well, not only because of capital spend, but also because of running costs, whether it be replacing batteries that's got stolen or uh, you know, having to put in infrastructure to cope with with um, power cuts. Um, plus, it's a usually competitive market, even though there are only really three players or four players in the market. So, um, um, it's difficult to make money in an economic downturn, and specifically that type of company where you don't can't really control your costs all, all that much, and you are dependent on on people spending and people are cutting back. So. It's it's always a difficult business to be in, and it's a terrible business to be in, mm. if you're if you're in the kind of economic downturn South Africa is in. Devon, um, there was a time when Vodacom was considered safe. Would you still that it say that it is, or maybe that its risk profile has changed a little bit? And if it has changed, is it because of things that the company has done internally, or? Is it just the macro environment? 
Um, Zanati, I think if you you know had to look at the the risk of the investment case and maybe compare it to a competitor like MTN, um, which, which operates in you, you know much racier jurisdictions, I would say it is less risky. Mm -hmm. I would say the 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 business model is in a stage of maturation so so that means it's really struggling to see you know revenue growth per per user and in fact these type of businesses are really trying to reinvent themselves to be more technology companies than uh, telecom companies you know they they they're really seeing a, a kind of a, a ceiling on what users are spending on um, SMSs, if those are even still a thing, but voice and, mm. and data and those prices continually getting driven lower. And yeah, I mean, I, I think they're working really hard and Rickus's point is spot on. These are very, very cash hungry businesses to run even more so now with, with having to, you know, put in backup energy supply. So yeah, they've got a tough old time about it. They need it. They're kind of like utilities, <laughs> mm. you know I mean? None of us are very far from our smartphones, but the reality is that the, the profitability is under pressure and my senses will remain. Um, Lucas, do you think that because there's this deal that uh, we're waiting for this partnership between uh, Vodacom and Remgro on massive the Vumatel and Dark Fiber, uh, Africa Company, uh, of course, uh, Devon mentions that these uh, companies have been trying to uh, reinvent themselves, of course, uh, I mean, yeah, going into fiber. Do you think that maybe there um, could be a little bit more upside if that deal does uh, come to pass? Um, or maybe it, markets have already priced that into the stock at this point? I know that we are waiting for competition, competition authorities to make their decision there. Well, it certainly would be bad for the price if um, the Competition Commission in their, well, I won't call it wisdom, mm -hmm. whatever they call them, whatever it is that they do go against Vodacom. If it's in Vodacom's favour, it might change the picture to less negative, but it doesn't change the overall picture to uh, anything positive. Uh, um, so, yeah, it will get back to 100 Rand. Who knows when, um, whatever does price and timing. But if I just take a look at what the price is doing, there's absolutely no sign of this thing turning around. Mm. So you might get a little positive sentiment no, once okay. the deal's if the deal's concluded, but it's not going to change the overall picture. Uh, there is a question here on uh, Bell Equipment. Uh, Bell Equipment had a great year. End result, will it be able to maintain the profit in the future even with a high debt level? Is it worth investing in Bell Equipment at the current share price? Um, I know that they had a really exceptional year, I think, in 2023. But I think they, the outlook was probably maybe for softer demand. Um, Devin, what do you make of Bell and obviously what they've done so far, but also uh, if they... Yeah, if the momentum carries on in the future. Yeah, look, I mean, I would agree with the comment that they have had um, a strong, a strong period. Really, really been um, quite exceptional actually for this company. And what, what's a really tricky space? But they, they have said the the commodity demand, the increase for commodity commodities has really helped them as they sell those big machines into that. So you know, their their volumes have been good. I think where they had, they, they navigated well, quite a tricky patch was with all the logistics constraints at our ports and everything else. They had to take on more inventory, um, hold more stock, which you can imagine how expensive it is for those those big machines. So they did take on a bit more debt for that. So that was concerning. Um, but yeah, they, 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 they managed to grow margins across all, all segments. Um, yeah, the, the, the debt, as I said, does worry me a bit. It's quite short-term in nature. A lot of it matures this year. Um, but, but yeah, doing do, doing pretty well in a, in, in its niche. And and my sense is that it actually is starting to look quite attractive as a takeover target. I know years ago it was wanting to go private. It's listed again now. Um, you know, there is that family ownership of the business. But, yeah, quite, quite an interesting little play. I don't know if I'd be jumping into it right here, but, yeah, one, one to look at. Yeah, Rikas, would this be one that you'd be looking at or that you'd see as interesting or not on your radar? It's not quite on my radar. One of the things that Devin mentioned is the possibility of corporate action, whether the family wants to take it private again or not. Um, secondly, is that inventory problem, as Devin said, possibly short term with you know, trying to get a machine on the ship? Um, 
not not easy if you don't have a harbour that that works. But um, in general, the sectoring um, interests me um, on the back of what I think is possibly a better resources mining um, environment going forward. But there's a lot of other companies that does similar things. So um, rather than concentrate on Bell specifically with all its specific questions, um, I might take a look at something like John Deere or Caterpillar overseas rather. Uh, all right. Uh, well, there's another interesting one. Um, I don't know. I, I struggle to keep up with the numbers of this company and what's happening. It's met eh? Um What's your take on this? I got flushed and learned a good lesson. I actually, that was when last year, um, that market corrections intention is to flush planless traders on uh, <laughs> investors. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Devin, um, do you think, yeah, I mean, do you think that uh, that, that uh, kind of uh, pressure that was seen last year just kind of made investors a, a little bit more nervous? I do know that they did, I think they did swing from a loss to a profit, if I'm not mistaken. But as I said, it's very hard to keep track with this company's numbers as they're quite volatile. What do you make of Mete? Look, it's, it, it's quite up in the air at the moment. And yeah, to, to the viewers, Point. They have come through a really, really tough time. Um, they they had some some management issues. I think they're on their third CEO in in almost two years. They they've bought a very experienced um, CEO now, Paul O'Flaherty. Mm -hmm. um, been at Escom, been at Arsenal Metal, been at a number of others to I think really try to stabilize it. Um, their, their their debt is is looking quite worrying, and and they've really had issues with their, their businesses they had a, a business in turkey and you can imagine um what what that's done with the inflation running rampant there how problematic that's been for them in their harness business locally histo um some of their their customers demanded kind of refitting of that that factory so that that cost them so i think there's just a lot that's not going their way yeah. at the moment um, energy storage, you know, renewable energy storage, which was supposed to be kind of the new growth segment, that that's kind of stalled a bit on the export side. So, yeah, as an auntie, I don't see a lot going right, and and I would really, um, if you're not invested, sit on the sidelines and wait for the for the viewer yeah. that is. Um, yeah, it's quite a tough place to be. Yeah, Rickus, this one risky. Yeah, there's. There's another matter outstanding. The Europe, the Europeans are looking at uh, oh, yeah. possible delusion on the um, on the battery side of things in in Eastern Europe, and yeah, uh, mm -hmm. you can't quantify that risk. What we possibly can, if they if they are found guilty, it could be have a huge financial impact in the form of penalties for a company that's already um, I think a problem making profits yeah. um, in Turkey or elsewhere. Um, no, so um, I've always thought they were pretty well run as a as operational um, business, but they but they in markets and in products and up um, they're not the favourites at the moment, and the share price shows it. And um, it fell to about ten rand. If it goes below that, it can get go a lot lower. So mm. yeah, no buying interest from my side. Yeah, all right. Um, what about Sun International? Can your panel give their view on Sun International's Zens uh, that came out today exited, uh, exiting Nigeria and is it still a buy uh, looking like they are cleaning up their balance sheets? I think they're getting, what, 275 million rand from uh, the sale of TCN, um, their stake in TCN Nigeria. Of course, something that they have uh, been wanting to do for a while. Um, Devin... Uh, do you think that this is a good sign and maybe a good buy signal? It it, it might be. I mean, I like the the, the strategy to to really sell these uh, non controlling stakes in jurisdictions that they they're not too close to. Um, I'm I'm not sure if they got a good price or not. It was I didn't really fully understand the the, the announcements yeah. and how it worked with the loan accounts and that. But yeah, net result: 275 million going onto the balance sheet to to pay down debt. That's great. It's kind of consistent with their, their strategy of previously they sold out of Chile and now they're very much a South African gaming company. They also had to really um, 
clean their operations up in COVID. You can imagine how gaming and hospitality pretty much went into zero during those times. So it's a much leaner and, and meaner operation than, than we've seen in a while. Um, we've seen great growth out of Sunbets. Um, that, that, that's really, although of a small base, growing nicely there. And then there's this Piermont acquisition, which, which we think is, is quite favorable. It still needs some approvals there. That, that could join the group. So mm-hmm. quite a bit going on, but but I think they, what, what I see is quite a clear strategic focus. Um, I, I think they're watching the debt very closely, and I think you kind of wrap that all together. I'm constructive on the company. Mm, all right. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Rikas, I think uh, Devon has actually covered uh, all of the important bits. Uh, let's take you to Netcare. Um, your view on Netcare, the share price is in a complete meltdown. Uh, why uh, such pressure on the stock, Kyrgyz? Um, Control prices and government interference. It's a well-run company. But um, if you're not totally in control of what you can charge people, and if you're sitting with the um, fear surrounding um, NHI, um, people are not going to be interested in how well you run your hospital. They are interested in how regulation and price control is going to affect your future operations. Shows in the share price. Um, so, not the type of business I want to be in internationally, generally, because of government interference, generally, internationally, and specifically also in South Africa. So, not something I'm interested in. Ah, all right. Well, um, there is one more question. I'm going to give uh, you guys each one. Uh, Bala World and Tingela. Can the panel comment on Bala World uh, on possible buyout and the Tingela share buyback? Oh, yeah. I actually forgot that we was it earlier on in the week. Bala World came out with that cautionary. We, we still don't have uh, any details on that. There's just speculation at this point. And then uh, the Tingela buyback. Um, so, Devin, I'll pick one, and then I'll give the other one to Rikas. Um, yeah, I'll I'll take Tungela. Why why not? I mean, I I, I think you know coal coal producers are are never an easy investment to to get over the line in a lot of investors' minds. But but I think what you've got to look at is the supply demand dynamics uh, for for thermal coal, and I think what you're seeing is a chronically undersupplied market. Yes, the, the share price has been wildly volatile and that dividend yield uh, sometimes looks like a telephone number. But I, th- I think you're seeing management's confidence in, in the outlook. Um, we're constructive on resources and commodities in general and, and coal specifically as well. We think that the, the chronic undersupply will persist for some time. So so we think management's just, just showing um, their, their confidence in, in the future of that, and, and we think it's a positive signal. Mm. Well, markets showed confidence in the announcement, the cautionary that Bala World came out with. Uh, Rikas, what is your um, sp- speculation on that? I have no idea. I hope they're getting rid of their Russian business. Because mm-hmm. um, if, if they do that, um, they start business difficult times, but that's cyclical. Um, I still like what they're doing in, in Mongolia. Mm-hmm. Um, and locally, we, we were talking about Bell, and I was also mentioning Caterpillar. It's, um, um, so that sector, I think, is quite favourable. Um, but as to the specifics of what Bollers is going to announce, I've got no idea. Looking at a graph, we've probably got upside to about 95 Rand if, 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 the, if the news is positive and it's not a buyout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait for the announcement and, yeah. and see what it's all about. All right. Well, let's get to your stock picks for today, gents. Devin, what will it be? Uh, mine's the fresh new listing on the JC. We buy cars. Um, I, I think it's one to take notice of. Maybe, maybe not rush in with with everything you've got. Uh, but but I mean, it's a fascinating business model. You know, they've got some really disruptive in-house software that that has has changed the used car market. For the better for for you and i right i mean i I don't know anyone who hasn't gone and got a quote from we buy cars so that customer experience is right up there i think some of the genius in that business model is their inventory turnover it's under 30 days which for you know used car dealership is just just incredible um there's, there's definitely growth and expansion still coming there um i've you know for the the long suffering transaction capital shareholders where we buy cars trades at the moment, I think they are still underwater. 
but I think for 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 fresh capital, it's it's one to look at, and I, and I think it's got a compelling growth story. Oh my gosh, that uh, graph is so deceiving. It's only been a few days, and the stock is still trading over twenty rand. Um, <laughs> Rick, is your stock pick for today? Oh, mine comes with a health warning. If it goes below one hundred and sixty rand, ignore what I'm saying. But it's Standard <laughs> Bank, which uh, you know historic price earnings of six and a dividend historic of of six is is very cheap um, not that i would ever buy something just because it's cheap but if you take a look at, at at a technical picture it's at a point where there's some support that could turn from here but as i said with the proviso if it if it if it if it doesn't turn around starts going below 160 then ignore that because then it will just become cheaper but yeah um fun, fundamental sound picture technical um, an interesting one and a possible buying point. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, gents. Really appreciate the insights. That is all for tonight's Stock Watch. Thanks to our guests, Devin Shute from the Robay Group and Rikas Riedes from PSG Hall in One Remsach. Up next, the close. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.